Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J. Judah and welcome back to another Reddit, not the a-hole, but crochet slash knit related story time, whatever I'm going <laughs> to, whatever this is going to be. I am finishing my Mountain Dew Voodoo. Gosh. I couldn't remember it my Mountain Dew Voodoo drink which of course I had to put it in my jack-o-lantern cup although glass I should say glass I will use this every day of the year that I want to drink out of a glass so it doesn't have to be Halloween but that is why I am using it today because I am use, drinking my Mountain Dew Voodoo soda that I had taste tested a while back and Funnily, funnily enough, it tastes like watermelon today, not strawberry, which we all know it is the pink candy flavor, which is strawberry. But I'm tasting watermelon today. Anyways, so today we are going to be getting into my Reddit, which right now it's got Black Friday deals galore, and we're going to look up... I don't know, drama, silly, funny, whatever stories that are fiber art related. And I will specify crochet and then knit or vice versa. I already have it written down. Uh, silly, I think, yeah, silly crochet story. So we're going to do silly, something funny, hopefully something lighthearted and something that will give us a good laugh. And I will do one of each, crochet and knit. And then, of course, at the end, I will do a something cute crocheted item or knit item. I don't remember what I did the last time because I did not do one last week. I apologize. I did not do one last week, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, last week was kind of a busy week, and this week has actually been kind of a, 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 tr a challenging week, but we are persevering. It is, as of today, it is Friday. I don't know what the date is. I'll pop it up something. Um, let's see. Can I see on my tablet what the day is? It is Friday, November 22nd. Hopefully this will go out tonight. If it does, great. If it doesn't, eh, oh well. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started and we'll find our first story. And as always, I go into this blind, I will type in the search bar what I'm looking for and I will try and find a story by the headline and hopefully something pops out at me and is interesting. And within the last seven days if not the last month because I don't want it to be like two or three years old that being said if I don't find anything that is within the last seven days or a month I will go within the last year and go from there so hopefully we find a couple of funny stories today is funny today I want it to be funny yeah I'll be right back Alrighty, I hope you have your drink, snack, whatever ready because we got a discussion and it seems to be quite lengthy. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is in the R Crochet subreddit and this was from seven months ago. So I did have to look past a week and the title of it is Funny Life Lessons Learned from Crochet. So let's get into this. All right, so it says, this is kind of a request. So she, this person, Lady Rochelle, is asking us for stories, but let's go ahead and get started. Her first paragraph is, this is kind of a, kind of a request. I'm looking for some funny stories about life lessons learned from through crochet. I'm hoping to make a blog post featuring some of these stories, so I'm looking for as many stories as possible, but I'm in it for the laughs as well. I will be sure to reach out to each individual personally to request to use the story before 
I would ever consider posting anything. If you don't want to even be considered for the blog post, just say, just say so and no worries. I'm looking for laughs, insanity, pure rage, rants, anything that makes you giggle and others to think, wow, that happened to me. Thank you all in advance. All right, Lady Rochelle. She starts with, I guess I'll go, I'll start. So this is her story and she's wanting us to give her our own stories. So here's hers. I work in the reservation office of a hotel and throughout the winter months, we are pretty slow. Well, I've been there, done that, so I can attest to that, especially if you live in an area that gets in a lot of inc inclement weather, a lot of snow, freezing temperatures. It's usually very slow in the winter. But let's go ahead and get back to the story. It's not, it's not a huge hotel, so there are only a couple of us in the office normally, two to three people in this shoebox of an office stuffed with cubicles, much too big for the space. Anyways, when it's super slow and and are caught up with any anything we needed to do, and the phones are slow, we are allowed to work on personal projects, watch Netflix, or genuinely do whatever as long as we are able to answer the phone quickly when it rings. Uh, pretty much the same. I worked at the front desk, so it's probably the same thing. Very similar. I did have scheduled things that I needed to uh, do, which was like check, check the hotel and stuff. But I mean, pretty much I stayed at the front desk and did whatever within that time frame. <laughs> and anyways, did, sometimes in the depths of the long cold winter, second winter, false spring, and third winter, oh my, oh my. <laughs> We can watch nearly a full day's worth of TV slash movies. I know, I've done it almost a whole season in one day. Wow. <laughs> okay, so with all of the this extra time, I love, I love, I have attempted a number of different hobbies, macrame, digital illustration, reading, tattoo design, and now crochet. I have basically taught myself how to crochet from scratch. That's very cool. With only YouTube and some other helpful blog posts. My goodness, I can... Anyways, I've been pretty proud of, proud of that and have made some pretty cool things so far. I just recently started on a blanket I got a notification that popped up and blocked what I was reading. I just recently started on a blanket, granny squares and large squares, or and larger squares. Got it. That I'm sure it will take me through the rest of the year to finish since it's spring and we're now busy in the office. But when I first decided to start on this blanket, I had to learn how to make granny squares, learn some new stitches, and learn how to read a pattern. I still really need to learn how to read a pattern, but okay. This ha this was no small feat since apparently you you much learn a new language to be able to read a crochet pattern. Must, I'm sure is what she was meaning to say. So I'll read it that way. This was no small feat since apparently you must learn a new language to be able to read a crochet pattern. I can attest to that because yeah. Again, with the help of a couple YouTube videos, I was able to get a basic understanding of how to read and follow a pattern. So there I am looking on Ravelry for some floral blanket squares and I find the green tea block by the floral hook. Highly recommend this pattern. It is beautiful and she has videos to explain and show you each part. All right, all right, so the floral hook. Let's all get on to Ravelry, Ravelry and do the floral hook. Unless you've already done that, great. Got it. Um, 
which I instantly fell in love with. Thank goodness she has videos to go with it because as a newbie to crochet, there were techniques that I had never seen or seen written in a pattern. I'm still finding new techniques and stitches that I've never seen. <laughs> To the point of the story, I'm sitting at work with my iPad playing the video for the pattern, feverishly pausing, playing back, playing, back up, play, pause, back up, slow down, play again, grabbing my yarn to do a couple stitches, playing the video again, frogging everything I had done, answering the phone, starting again, squinting so hard the lines on my brows are becoming permanent. <laughs> This continued for most of the day for at least a couple of days. There were times when my coworkers heard my frustration and peeked around the cubicle with a quick, you good? <laughs> Only to be met with a groan and a sign or and a sigh as I realized what a poor summer child I was. <laughs> LOL. This has also happened. Yes, I do get the people in it interrupting me and I have that frustrated or I start to count really loud like because I don't want to lose my count <laughs> so I, I feel this I feel this on multiple levels much like being a parent reading and learning a new crochet pattern will teach you the art yes the art of patience <laughs> that is true if you don't have any you will learn I honestly have to sit and laugh at myself for how silly I was to think that I could just download a new pattern and just twiddle my crochet needle into a perfect piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Currently, I'm still working on the block very close to done, around 37 to by 42, I think. And I can see every single mistake that I have made starting from the very beginning. Oh my gosh. I hate that. I hate that. Somehow I really don't know how because I swear I can count. Yep, yeah, me too. I can count. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I can count accurately when I'm trying to crochet. Okay. Do to do. I only made seven petals instead of eight from the beginning, so the entire pattern is off. Stitch counts, the number of repeats, everything is off. Oh my gosh. This brings me to the second lesson that I learned. Just go with it. Will will everything always be perfect? No. <laughs> and I can attest to that. Are you able to continue on despite the mistakes? It might be super painful for some, but yes, you can. And that is so true. Sometimes you just got to let it go and move on. <laughs> All right, let me find the, the... Okay, roll with the punches. Take a couple of hits on the chin and get back in the fight. In parentheses, crochet shouldn't be a fight, but you get the metaphor. In parentheses, perfectionist is not something I want to associate myself with anyone anymore. It is pretty, it's pretty, and if you don't know what is it's supposed to look like, it's beautiful. And that is the truth too. I didn't realize that I had only seven petals instead of eight until probably around 25 by 42. Wow, that's like, yeah. So it was far too late to frog everything I had decided. Yeah, I wouldn't frog that either. <laughs> I'm taking this block as a learning block and I'll probably include it in my blanket despite every, every single error. Glaring at me every second of every day, but I am proud of it and I honestly can't wait to be done. And then she adds at the bottom, please comment with your own funny stories and what life lessons you learned along your crochet path so we can share in the laughter and relate with others who may have the same mental condition <laughs> we do. And in parentheses, it's a joke. Don't take it so hard. Thank you. But there is not a single comment 
on this story and it was from seven months ago so i suggest look up funny crochet stories and it was seven months ago it's in the uh our crochet subreddit and look up funny life lessons actually type in funny life lessons learned from crochet and go and tell your own stories with this i wow so that just what life lessons have i learned i mean simply honestly i would have to say that everything does not have to be perfect and it is okay to make mistakes if you don't say it people are not going to notice what's wrong <laughs> or, or your mistakes unless it's glaring at them but typically i honestly i don't think people are really going to pay attention especially if they don't crochet themselves they're not going to notice so just roll with the punches that is definitely something i have learned uh let's see I don't have, I really don't have any funny and frustrating stories. Um, let, I don't know. Comment down below. What are your funny stories and life lessons that you've learned through crochet? And if you get a chance, go to that subreddit and answer her. Because I think that would, I think I'm going to start following this one. Because I want to see if anybody gives their own stories. Because that is true. That is true. Uh, uh, I guess uh, like a, maybe, I don't know. I, if I can think of a funny story, I might put it in the comments below, but I don't have, I don't think I really have any funny life lessons learned from crochet other than what she has already said that I don't, okay, I guess a funny I don't know that it's funny but I can't read a pattern to save my life <laughs> I need a video I need a tutorial to watch and I do the I do that whole stop play rewind <laughs> crochet watch again stop rewind and, and constantly going back and forth but actually you could get any stories like this uh, that's from anything that it is okay that is, that is my biggest takeaway. It is okay to mess up and it is okay that there are mistakes in your projects because you know what? That makes it real. That because life itself is not perfect. And I know practice makes perfect and the more you do something, the better you get at it. But I'll tell you what, when I do these, they're not, I don't think I've ever made any one the same. I mean, I've done it the same, but they end up being s slightly different. Like this part will be different and clearly they're not the same. And this is on the same, same one. And even this part, I'll do it technically the same, but it comes out differently from each one. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I don't have any others right here in front of me <laughs> but anyways yeah it's okay for it to not be perfect because nothing is perfect so that was pretty good I really like that and I would love to come back and see if anyone adds to this story or adds their own stories to this I don't even know if anybody's followed it or liked it or anything i'm gonna upvote it yeah yeah there's zero comments and all right so let's go ahead and move on to maybe we'll find something knit related all right so as always it seems that knit is the hardest one to find stuff so this one is from seven years ago it's by all the pretty thing, all the pretty songs, sorry. All the pretty songs, and it's in the R Knitting Reddit, subreddit, whatever. So, like I said, this one's from seven years ago, so, but 
it is what it is. And the headline, and it's actually a pretty short story. So the headline is My Airport Knitting Experience Funny Knitting Stories. And this is what they have to say. After my experience the other day, I thought it would be fun to see what your funniest knitting stories are. So mine goes like this. On Monday morning, I was getting ready to fly home and sitting in the airport terminal waiting to board. I had my knitting project out, working it on my lap when an old woman sat down next to me, definitely somewhere in her 70s. She took a look at me, then pulled out her tablet and started playing Candy Crush. I then stopped for a minute and did a double take, noticing that a couple of people were looking, and then I realized I'm 21 excuse me, I'm 21 knitting a mitten and the woman next to me is old enough to be my grandmother and on the internet. I don't know if it's really that funny, but it sure was ironic. What's your funniest knitting story? Okay, so I mean, that is pretty funny. She's knitting and 21 and the person next to her is in her 70s and on her phone, which typically, or on her tablet, which typically that would be in the other way around. So yeah, I would say that's kind of funny. Um, cause it is definitely not common for a young person to be nanny. Although now so many people knit it is like, it is cause to be honest, any fiber art related project or whatever, um, is for all ages and there's kids that are doing it and teenagers and yeah so I mean it's, it's not a old person's old woman's thing anymore it is for all ages and it always has been it just is typically said or thought of as an old woman's fun project to do but as we know it is for everybody so in the comments, there is someone that said, my story also took place in an airport waiting at the gate. I was sitting next to an older couple. And when I took out my sock project, the woman leaned over and asked if I was knitting. She told me that she is a crocheter and she has tried to get all of her daughters and granddaughters into the hobby, but no one is interested. She kept raving about how wonderful it was to see a younger person knitting. When they got up to board the plane, she told me, just know that there's a grandmother out there who's proud of you. My husband kept repeating that phrase throughout our whole trip, and it's become an inside joke for us. Oh, that's actually more endearing. That's so cool. So cute. And someone put commented underneath that and said, oh, what it, bleh. OMG, that's so adorable. As someone with no living grandmother's I totally would have teared up at that. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. And I am. That's so silly. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> someone just, said, someone commented, I teared up a little just reading it. As you can see, I am tearing up right now. Uh, here's another. Oops, come on. Oh, please don't. Okay. All right. Slow down. My tablet's being a little finicky. So here's another comment. My son is a wrestler and I spend almost every Sunday, Saturday from November to March sitting on bleachers, waiting, waiting, waiting for his six minutes. After seeing some of the same people over and over again from different schools, we now have a group of knitters who sit together. Oh, that's cool. Someone else in church the other Sunday, I dropped my ball of yarn and it rolled under the pews towards the front. I had to tap the woman in front of me and she had to tap the woman in front of her and so on. Oh, oh man, I would hate that. And then they had to hand it back under each pew to me. I should really have my yarn better contained. <laughs> now that is funny. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Let's see. Someone commented underneath that. I discovered something very handy on a flight back home recently. I kept my yarn ball in a gallon Ziploc tucked next to me in the seat. My working yarn 
was pulled through the opening of the bag. I had no accidents and it kept everything nice and tidy. So that was a response to that first story. Uh, that's so funny. Oh my goodness. Throw, throw a grommet into the side of a freezer bag. Okay. Uh, in, instant no snag yarn holder. Oh, very cool. Let's see. Is there any other stories? Here we go. Here's another one. I was sitting in the airport once. I was on my way home from a stitches event. Big knitting convention for those of you who don't know. Yeah, well, I didn't know, and I'm a crocheter. I mean, I know that there's there's tons of events that go on worldwide, but I don't know what they're all called. But anyways, all right, so let's get back to the story. Let's see. Uh, and I had just taken a class on making Argyle socks and had gotten some yarn and was halfway through the first one. An older woman came and sat a few seats over and pulled out her knitting and was super nice and we got to chatting. A few minutes later, two other women who had also been at Stitches came over to the gate and whipped out their knitting. We were all having a lovely time chatting and talking about what yarn we had bought. Then a man who was on the same flight walked over and said, is there a knitting convention? We politely told him, no, it ended yesterday. <laughs> there was also the time I was sitting and knitting and someone asked me if I was sewing. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, I guess. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see. Here's, here's another one. I was waiting at my gate knitting away on some mitts and this lady plops down next to me, leans in really close and just watches. Well, that would be kind of creepy. She said she wanted to learn. She said she wanted to learn. It was actually really awkward because she was eating ice cream and her face was so close to my face. I packed it in after five minutes. I felt nervous and kept dropping stitches. Oh my goodness. Okay. A fun story. I was again knitting mitts on the plane next to a father and his six-year-old daughter. She was fascinated and was watching intently. The yarn was a really pretty variegated pink, peach, orange, and squishy. Ooh, I can imagine that. She, she kept reaching out to touch it. So sweet. I finished one and let her try it on. It was way too big, but she was so excited. I gave her dad some tips on how to get her started. He seemed really appreciative that she was entertained for three hours. That's pretty cool. And she was telling everyone who would listen that she was learning to knit. It was a fun flight. Aw, that is so cute. Okay. Oh, here, let's, this one's really short. My 11-year-old nephew told me he wanted to try yarning again, <laughs> but we're half a country apart. Aw, so I had my doubts. He reminded me he was, or he has Skype. Oh, that's cool. Anybody in Western MA, Massachusetts, want to teach a boy how to knit on the round or in the round? I may just send him a loom knit. Oh, that's cool. A loom kit. Jeez. All right. So there we go. That's it. That's it. That's all. Uh, I don't know why knitting has so, has so few stories. I wish there was more knitters that would get on Reddit and give their stories. Alrighty, let's go on to something cute. All right, so I found a very cute knit sweater, and I'm not gonna try to Granavis. I don't know if that's how she pronounced her name, but this is by uh, Granavis, and I she says spent the summer knitting this sweater to finish it in time for fall. Safe to say I'm in love with it and I am in love with it too. That is absolutely, absolutely beautiful and adorable. I love the colors. I love the colors. And are those, is that foxes? Is that foxes that are wearing, it looks like they're, they're foxes wearing glasses. That is just too funny. There is a pattern and let me go. Yep, it is a fox. So I'm going to go to the pattern. I'm sure it's in Ravelry. Yes, it's Ravelry.com. And I will put the pattern in the description box below. 
so that you can go if you want to create this beautiful it is adorable and i love her colors now in the pattern it shows much more subtle colors so i'll pop up a couple of those too but oh and then there's some that have used totally different you know what i'll do i'll pop up all the colors but it is an adorable sweater and let's see it's for fox sake that's what this the pattern is called for fox sake and i think it looks like a fox wearing glasses that is adorable i love it and i love her colors i will say that because i i love the blue in hers but i love the other other renditions as well and i will pop them all up and it definitely can be worn by a man or a woman because there's men and women wearing this sweater it is absolutely adorable though i love it for fox sake oh okay it is a fox wearing glasses that is adorable i'll put i'll put the um logo it's the clever sweater for fox sake the cle clever sweater i'll put yeah that's that's so cute all right I love this sweater oh come on I want to go back to hers yeah I like her the the blue in her sweater the gray it's a much more contrasting color but I that is adorable that is adorable anyways I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did hit the like button I would have really appreciate it I would have I <laughs> I would really appreciate it. And if you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Have a great evening. I will see you all later. And remember, gravity works, guys.